<laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, 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 don't do that, dude. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm checking something's going on right here. Good morning, Kenya. Good morning, Seda. I see that you guys are on. Ready to go, making sure, making sure. Yep, you're on, you're on. Good deal. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot my remote control. Need my remote. To clash, to clash. I need this remote control here to be able to change up here. Okay. All right. Whew. Uh, let's get started with a word of prayer. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, again, we just thank you for the opportunity to come here and honor you and worship you. God, let's just thank you again for all that you have done for us. We can ask now to your blessing upon all those that are watching online um, that you will move um, just as you are here, that you will be there um, for the, to show all that your presence is not limited to a place, that you are a God that is omnipresent, that you are everywhere. Um, just as you are present here in Kannapolis, North Carolina, you are present in Kenya. God, that you are present in Uganda. You are present in Liberia. God, you are present in Ohio and Florida. God, you are present in Georgia. You are present here in North Carolina in Charlotte. God, we just again thank you for your greatness and your omnipotence of your power. I ask Holy Spirit now you will have your way um, with this message and with me. Hide me behind the cross that no one sees me, but they see Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Um, I pray for the salvation of all that, uh, that are watching. If there is not one that is, knows Jesus as Lord and Savior, that you will bring conviction today of salvation. Bring repentance and salvation. God, we just give you all the praise and honor and glory. And this, just looking forward to what you're going to do today, what you're going to say today. That you're going to set the captives free. You are going to teach us how to be followers of Jesus Christ and, and to fight back the darkness with your light. We love you and give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Let me get a swig of water here real quick. All right. We have started a series um, and I was kind of interesting how God just kind of uh, brought this to me, but it's called The Clash. The Clash. It is a kind of a, um, I kind of also kind of got the idea of watching my son play football and how when the uh, offense and the defense come together, it's a it's a clash. It's the understanding that, that you know, you've got a good and evil. One's coming against the other. And there's going to try to win uh, uh, um, in this thing of life. There's, a, there's an object of winning. And for evil's sake, is their winning is that you don't make it to heaven. You don't see the glory of God. You uh, uh, curse the glory of God. You curse God. And then, then you end up in a place called the lake of fire that burns forever and ever. And he thinks it's a victorious win on his part. So we, we, we kind of not really noticed that. But in that, just to ask you this question, um, it's a very interesting question. Um, but it, to ask you is that have you ever been in a fight? Have you ever been in a fight? Yes. So uh, I'm going to think. I'm going to put it in several aspects. Some of you are very peaceable people. Have you ever been just in a verbal fight? H have you been in a verbal fight? Have you been in a fight that went from verbal to a throwing things? Things got thrown across the room, you know, and you're seeing things being thrown at each other, you know, whatever. All right. And then have you been into the fight where it got physical and pushing and shoving and hitting and kicking and the police were called? And have you been in that kind of a fight? 
I myself have been in those kind of fights. Um, they are not pretty. They are very ugly and they are very um, disturbing. Um, in that, that is kind of like what it is. It's a clash. It's a, a clash against good against evil. It's against persons that have um, pride and want their way about something. And in that, they will do nothing um, to stop it. But the thought of it is, is that we, we kind of always look at the physical, a lot of things, and we don't really recognize that there are also um, you know, spirits that that manipulate people's thinking and also that spirits come into people's bodies and also cause them to behave in certain ways. We find this in James chapter 1 verse 2 through 4 and it says this, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it, consider it an opportunity uh, an opportunity for great joy. And I would stop right there one second, okay? I, I'm trying to think about this, okay? When you're having these kinds of troubles, you know, fighting, conflict, arguments, pushing, shoving, hitting, shooting, stabbings, whatever it is, how can you consider troubles great joy? I, I that, that one when I read James, James is very thought provoking. He's also very uh, challenging to the way that we think. Um, and then that we have to think outside of the, what, what we mean of how things should be, but how does God think? A way, a way a man thinks is totally different than the way God thinks. So I think James is on the level here that he's trying to get us saying, hey, think this way because God does things different. So verse 3, it says this, For you know that when your faith is tested, an endurance has a chance to grow. So let us grow for." For when endurance is fully developed, you will be per perfect and complete, needing nothing. So in this, he's saying, look, the stress and attention of the clash, of the things that you're going through, it's creating a, um, a strength in you to understand that there's faith that's deeper in you that God is calling out. Many of you can't move forward because your faith is so weak. You cannot, you cannot imagine God getting you out of the slavery that you're in. Whether it's debt slavery, or whether it's literal slavery, whether it's slavery of, 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 of a person in a relationship, you know, that they've got you bound and they're threatening, you know, that if you, get, if you leave me, I'll kill you. I mean, there's a lot of that kind of relationship going on in the world, not just here in America. I hear about it all the time. It's, it's, it's that thought of that there is something that's binding you. But in that, God is saying in this thing here, look, even though you're going through this time of trials and troubles, count it all joy. Now, now that, that, that's something to think about that many of us, we, we rely on the pastor of the church to kind of um, take that lead. And in that, we're just going to show up to church every week and just do our church thing of saying, we're going to listen to the pastor. We're going to sing some songs. You know, we're going to fellowship with each other. Then we're going to go back and do life. And we're just going to leave everything at church. It's like a club. We, we, we just kind of do things as a club. But here's the thought that's really been provoking me this past this several weeks here now. And it's the thought about it is I don't cross the path, especially you that watch online. Many of you that are watching online, you're in Africa. Many of you. Um, there's a group of you that are in Kenya that sit every Sunday. You come every Sunday and you watch. But here's the thing about it is I don't cross the path of people that you cross. So in that, it's, it, it's coming upon me of, of how I can teach you or how can I inspire you to see the souls of the people that cross your path, whether they're relatives or their neighbors or their co-workers or whatever, who, whoever it is that cross your path for that moment in time in that day, that their soul at one point or another, their body's going to die and their soul's going to be before God and be judged whether they're going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. So in that, this clash that is inside me that wants to go uh, and kind of bring it towards you of a challenge of thinking about how can we look at people different that it is a soul that's going to die and go to hell. For an example, some years ago, I was a bus driver at a church. Uh, um, I drove kids. We had a bus ministry. We drove children to church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. There was always something going on for the kids. So the kids wanted to get out of the house and they wanted to. So we're running 30, 40 kids to church. Every time the church doors open, we were doing something and we were running the, the church bus and running. 
Well, one, one evening service, I remember it was evening because it was dark that night, um, this one young man decided to come up against three of my girls and start trouble against my girls. It got out of hand. It got kind of verbal and physical. And in that, I had to put him off the bus. I called him, called his mom, said, look, your boy is causing troubles. He's not backing down, and, and um, I need you to come and get him. As I'm on the phone with him, he's walking off, heading up the street. And I'm hollering at him to come back. And I don't know if, how many of you have ever had teenagers in your life that you've had to deal with. Sometimes teenagers can be quite difficult to deal with. I was a foster parent. We raised a lot of children, a lot of teenagers in my house. And then that I've dealt with, I've dealt with teenagers 14 years old, fall down on the ground like a two-year-old, kick and scream because they didn't get their way because they were being punished for something they did wrong. You know, I, I've the, the difficulties of teenagers is very hard sometimes but in that this young man decides he's going to walk off and I'm hollering at him and he says some foul language and says some other thing to me that he's going on home I call his mom back said hey your boy's walking I've yelled at him to come back he will not come back I've got to get these kids back to their homes and keep them safe so I'm telling you he's walking this direction down this road and if you want to cross him get pick him up that's where he'll be at okay I, 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 and then I, I, she said, okay. So I left, went on, took all the kids home, and then come back, dropped the bus off, and headed home. As I pull in the driveway, I see a car in my, in my, pulled off to the side in my driveway. And as I pull up, this man gets out of, out of his car, and it's that young man's dad. I see, uh, I see him walking towards me with his fist clenched, and I know the history of this man. This man is a fighter. This man does it, he doesn't like to, he doesn't like to just hear or talk about anything. He just starts throwing fists. That's just what he does. That's, that's the history of him, the stories about him. I've heard many, many stories about the man. And then that he comes strung up, get all up in my face, and he's telling me, uh, that, that how bad of a person I, I am that I kicked his son off the bus and he made him walk home that's what was told him that I kicked him off the bus and made him walk home I didn't do that and I said do you want to hear the truth and the real side of the story and he said no I don't want to hear the truth I don't want to hear your side of the story I'm gonna blank 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 as he's cussing me out he's telling me he's gonna beat me up but not in those words he was speaking another language that's the language of you know maybe you've run across that language before you know where the, 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 the anger comes out the cuss words comes out with that and he's got his fist clenched back pulled back and he's ready to hit me as he's standing there and he's telling me he's going to beat me up uh, in those nice uh, other languages that he used you know um, he's telling me this I looked him dead in the face and I said since you don't want to hear the truth of what happened I'm going in the house now and he says, no, you're not. I'm going to kick your blank blank. And he's going to go and says some beautiful words that he says. And I just said, you know, I'm going in the house. And I walked by him. I walked around him and walked up to the house. And as I was walking up to the house, uh, Sissy came out. And she knew him too. And so she told him, listen, you better go or I'm going to call the police. He's following me up to the porch he's getting ready to walk up the porch with me but he hears her saying she's going to call the police and in that he finally he backs down and he gets in his car and he leaves now you see that kind of confrontation so you know some men will look at that conversation and say, oh you're a wimp you're a, you know and they call you names because you should have just fought him right there you know in the driveway but that's not how it works in certain conferences of clashes, there's a way to battle, a battle that brings victory to God and to Jesus Christ. Because there, let me tell you, the story doesn't end there. Some years later, he, was come, he came back into my life and I was able to lead him to salvation to Jesus Christ. He prayed the prayer and asked Jesus to save him of his sins and he got saved. Do you think I could have led him to salvation if I would have got into a fist fight with him in my driveway and the police would have came and we both would have went to jail? Do you think I could have led him to Jesus? But in the long run, what I saw is that I saw his soul needing salvation and in that, this confrontation of way man thinks to do things, it is impossible to lead others to salvation when we do man things man's way. Whew, here we go. 
Some of you are being told to do something by God and you're refusing to do them because you don't see it as a way that's going to benefit you. It's something that you hate somebody because they hurt you and you said, you know what, mm, I'm not going to do this, God, because he did this to me or she did this to me. I'm not going to do this to them, for them. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I'm not going to forgive them. I'm not going to give them this gift. I'm not going to do these things that you're asking me to do because they hurt me. God is saying, I said... Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Your freedom comes from when your obedience is in full force of saying, God, you're telling me to do this. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it because I love you, and you love me, and I'm going to do what you ask me to do. I'm telling you I don't like it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to be obedient to you, God, and I'm going to do this. And what you do is you bring victory in a way that the natural eye does not see, but a spiritual war fought in there that good comes and fights for you when you say, look, I, accept, I just want to let you know I forgive you for what you did to me. They might not even see they did anything wrong to you. But in that you're saying that. And then when you're doing an obedience of saying you're supposed to bring something to them. A gift or something to them. I'm telling you a freedom comes from that. And in that a whole war is won by the power of God and through Jesus Christ who died on the cross. And in that there's a war that won that their soul will see and get a chance to to be saved and salvation and you will see their soul and they'll, you'll see their face in heaven one day. And many of you are like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that. That's just not, you don't understand. You just don't understand what they did to me. Listen, in Hosea, so it's the ask the question, it's the ask the question here, is who, so who is the one that will fight the fight for their soul? Who will be the one that will fight the fight for their soul? Again, I can't be in Kenya and see all the people that you run across in Kenya. You may think, well, I can watch, I can get them to watch online. Now, they're watching you. They're not going to go on the, 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 the internet and watch some white pastor from America to get Jesus. They're going to watch you and your behavior. How are you going to treat them? The things that you've done wrong, now you're taking interest in their soul. They're going to watch you on that, that, that motion of, of your action towards them. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says this. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. See that... See thou hast forgotten the laws of thy God, I will also forget my I will also forget thy children. Hosea is sitting here, look, he's prophesying, look, look. You've got to do what I'm asking you to do. Be obedient. Forgive as you will be forgiven. Peter said to Jesus, Jesus, hey Jesus, how many times have we got to forgive somebody? You know, one, two times, and then we can go back and we can, we can just go at them and take revenge on them. And Jesus said, no, 70 times 7. And then that he's saying, look, it's like day after day after day, they do the same thing, hurting you and hurting you and hurting you. And they're just like, okay, what am I supposed to be learning from this? How am I supposed to fight this battle that this war, this, this enemy is trying to bring me down and hurt me? How am I to fight this? Today's story that I believe is a way that God is going to do absolute miracles and fighting a war that we just see it. There's no way of winning. As you, as you have your Bibles today, turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. The story of this guy, his name is Elijah. And in this one day, Elijah is called to speak against Israel because Israel started following this new king, this king and his queen. It was King Ahab and, and Queen Jezebel. 
And then that they were at a war, these two, the king and king, the government there, they were after the people of God because they wanted their God, Baal, everyone to follow Baal. Now, Baal, if you do some, uh, uh, some research on Baal, Baal was big about child sacrificing, killing babies. And in that, this is thing that, that, that was, they were just brainwashed about. And in that, they were, they were uh, what would you call, it? manipulating the ch children of God, the Israelites, to follow them. And then so, they were, they were pushing out their power in such a great way that they demanded, and then they set forth a, a decree to kill the prophets of God so that then the people would have no men, godly men to follow. Kind of reminds me of a lot of things that's happening in, uh, uh, in, in the world today. Especially since 2020 of the COVID. That, that, that when the government passed down laws to shut down the churches, that, that a lot of the men of God shut up because they were in fear of their life. Canada, Australia, California. But there were some men that stood up and ended up in jail. The clash is between the people of God and those that are standing with evil, such as this king Ahab. And then such, Elijah says, you know what, since you guys want to follow this king, God is he's going to leave you, and in that, he's going to, his presence, his favor is going to leave you, and in that, for the next, how many years, until I say so, it's not going to rain. And God honors the words of the man, the prophet, and in that, it goes three years with no rain. And we saw this for here in America. We saw a drought in 2008 and 2009. And I believe that was just a judgment of God as well as to say, look, they're, 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 you're having troubles here because, look, especially here in North Carolina, North Carolina, you're all about the gay rights. You're all about the killing babies. You're all about things that are against God. So, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to hold the rain. That's what I believe would happen back then. You decide to vote for these people that want to come in, and it's just like that. The people of God in Israel was like, you know, yeah, King Ahab, he's going he's gonna to do us great. And what happened? King Ahab turned on them. But King Ahab had this guy, it was like a second in command, his name was Obadiah. Him and Obadiah were, you know, they were, they were uh, 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 Obadiah loved God, he believed in God, but somehow he ended up working for this king. And so one day the king says, look, we need to find some, it hasn't rained in three years, we need to go find some water, some land for, to, to feed our, our horses and our donkeys, and you know, so that we will be able to, if somebody comes against us, we can still fight, you know, and whatever it is. And so they split up and they go different ways, and one day... And we're getting to the story here in, 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 in um, 1 Kings chapter 18, where, where Obadiah comes across and runs into Elijah. And here the whole time, for the three years, the king Ahab heard that Elijah passed this word, this curse upon the land, there will be no rain. He sent out everyone to look for Elijah and, and to, so that he could get Elijah to take his words back or kill him, one of the two. But out of nowhere, God hides Elijah, and in that, it's, and God says, okay, Elijah, it's time to come out of hiding, and it's time to fight again. And this is where we pick up the story in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 1. 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. It says, and after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. So Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Now as I read this, I really felt the Holy Spirit come upon me that, that there, there's a significance in this word three, that there is a severe famine in the land for three, for three years. But God is saying that there's going to be, woo, in America, in America, in America, there is something in a three, whether it's three months or three years, there is something of a famine coming. It's a, it's a word, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to say it, I don't want nothing to do with it. But if it is true what God is saying, it is saying, look, look, look. 
God is mad at the people of America because they have turned their back on God because this was made of a, na a nation, one nation under God. We have absolutely allowed all the ungodly to have their way and in that we have allowed this nation to turn their backs. We are such a wicked people that other countries are sending missionaries to America so America will be saved. How sad is that? Other countries are struggling as well because of their turning their back on God. Canada, Australia, parts of Africa. We've enjoyed the liberty of the financial blessings of God and we have turned our backs since we've got the blessings. We don't need God anymore. We're on our own. Reminds me of some teenagers. Once they find a job, they think they're all good. And then next thing you know, uh, uh, they're in trouble because they didn't manage their money right. People of God did not manage their relationship with God right and in that they are in big trouble now. Because they have allowed evil to come in through, 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 through trying to find the right word to explain it. We have allowed the things of the world to say this is good and it's sin. What they say is good, God says is evil. And we have fallen for the lie that it is good and now we have sinned ourselves against the holy God. So now Elijah is on his way. Verse 3 says this. And Ahab called Obadiah who was over the household. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly and when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them fifty by fifty in, in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of, of water and to all the valleys. Perhaps we may find grass and save the horses and mules alive and not, not lose some of the animals. So, they divided in the, land, the land between them to pass through it. And Ahab went in one direction by himself. And Obadiah went in another direction by himself. And as Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met and Obadiah recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is it you, my lord, Elijah? Now listen to this one. In one moment, listen, in one moment, one person can come into your life and change everything. Obadiah is with the king and they're trying to survive. They're trying to do everything to survive. They're trying to find water. They're trying to do things uh, 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 to, to keep it together. Then out of nowhere, one moment, Elijah walks into Obadiah's life and things are going to change. God is saying, listen, look for that one person. Pray for that one person for when they come, you will recognize that that is the person and everything's going to change in your life. Let's read on. Verse 8. And he said to him, it is I. Go tell the Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would give your servant into the hands of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say, He is not here, he would take an oath of the kingdom or nations that they had not found you and now you say go tell your Lord behold Elijah is here and as soon as I have gone from you the Spirit of the Lord will carry you and I know not where and so when I come and tell Ahab and cannot find you he will kill me although although I I your servant have feared the Lord from my youth. 
Verse 13. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophet of the Lord? The prophets of the Lord. How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to Ahab said to him, I'm jumping down to verse 17, I'm sorry. I'm skipping down to verse 17. And when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you, trouble, you troubler of, uh, of Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and followed the, the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to meet at Mount Carmel and the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Well, let's stop right there. So in this, we see that, that, that Obadiah is, is he's saying, look, look, I, I fear God. Even though I'm working for the king, I hid. Nobody knows it. I hid these guys, these men of God, took care of them. You know, but I'm still doing this. I'm still doing the things of God. I'm, but it's to say to you, but may, you might be that person that's able to cross the bridge and talk to both the evil side and the godly people. That the anointing on you is to be able to say, you know what? I, I, I believe God is giving evil another chance to change their mind. So the sinners that are crossing your path, there's an opportunity for you to say to them, but God is judging. Would you not change your mind to see that your sin is called up? See, Elijah comes with great power, and the Word of God is saying, look, Elijah is coming as the representative of God that's going to bring judgment. Now, here's what's calling, this is what's going to happen here next. As the story goes on, that, 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 um, that Elijah turns around and they bring, they meet at Mount Carmel, and all the people of Israel meet there as well. And all the prophets that he asked to be there, and he brings a challenge, a clash. Whew, here we go. Here's the clash. He says to the, the, the prophets, look, you build an altar, take a cow, calf, or, or, or whatever, kill it, and then you pray to your God, and whoever sends fire down from heaven and burns up the offering is the living God in the God we will serve and we will follow. So it is like, you know, the prophets, the 450 prophets is like, deal, we got you on this one. We can do this one. So they start, they, they build the altar, they kill the cow, they stick it on there, and they start doing all their dances and their rituals, and they not you know, for hours later, they get to the point of they're cutting themselves, and they're yelling and screaming for hours and hours, and there's nothing happening. Elijah gets to the point that he's funny sometimes, you know. He starts, saying, he starts making fun of them. Hey, maybe you're not yelling loud enough. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe your God is sleeping. Huh? Maybe, here's a lot. This is funny when you read this one. Maybe he's going to the bathroom. He's going number two, you know. And he's, he's got the door shut and he can't hear you, you know. And maybe you need to knock on the door and yell a little bit louder because maybe he's going... Pfft, pfft, and you can't hear him, you know. And it's funny because they get angrier and angrier and they're hollering louder and they're cutting themselves anymore. And then they've come to the place of exhaustion. Whew. Maybe today you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're just exhausted with life. Maybe you think you know Jesus as Lord and Savior and you're exhausted with life because you're doing things your way and absolutely you are wore out. Some of you, there's a few of you, there's two of you. Who? That's how he works. He works. He, works. he speaks with it that way. There are two of you that you're in a position that you feel like, you know what, life is done. I'm done with life. Uh, it's over. I'm just going to find a way to be done and probably kill myself or find a way that, you know, I, I can be killed. You're thinking about doing something real stupid. And I'm going to be bold as saying that. Because your life is very valuable. 
You were created for a purpose, and in that, this time, you were listening. You made it this far in this message. You didn't fall asleep. You didn't fall around. You didn't go here. You didn't leave. You didn't flip up. You made it here, and you're hearing these words, and it's the words of saying that God loves you so much that He has a way for you out of what you're in. The bondage of that, that, that hopelessness, your worthlessness that you think you are, that God is saying you are valuable. You have a purpose. But the freedom from that comes from this. Repent of the sin that you're in. Turn away from it. Put it down. Don't pick it up again. Follow Jesus who died on the cross for your sins and the power that was given through raising him from the dead and make him Lord, King of your life. Take down the other gods that you have created. Clean your house of all the crystals and all the other stuff that you, the beads that you have, the little things with the eyes on it. Get it out of your house and proclaim that God and Jesus Christ is your salvation. Proclaim the blood of Jesus Christ all through your house. And I'm telling you in a moment, as soon as you start, you're going to feel the difference as soon as you start trashing the, those crystals. As soon as you start trashing those, 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 those bracelets, those beads. As soon as you dump that stuff in the trash, the spirits, the evil spirits that are attached to those are going to sense that you mean business and the Holy Spirit is making his way and he's going to push them spirits out and you're going to feel it lighter. You're going to feel this heat, this, this, this fire that's coming upon you. You're going to, it's just going to start, you're going to know that God is real. Elijah turns around and he says, you know, look, look. You guys are done. It's my turn. Verse 33. It says, and he puts in the wood. He, he, this is Elijah now. He puts the wood in the order and cuts the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill the jar with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar and filled the trench also with water. Jump down to verse 37. You know, no, I don't have this on the notes here, but I'm going to read 36 as well. 36. And at the time of the, uh, of the offering of the, of the uh, oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. And 37, it says, And answer me, O Lord, answer me, this, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on, the, on their face and said, The Lord is. He is God, the Lord, He is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, let, them, let not one of them escape. And they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slaughtered them there. God is saying today, look, there's a way to fight this battle. He's going to send. A, 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 he's going to send something that, that's going to come. A, a, that's going to be very known that he is a real God. Fire from heaven. And that day, it would absolutely make. What would you really say? Well, I see that in the movie. It could be something, something. You see, a lot will make up ways. They'll make up ideas and they'll make up things in their head. But the idea is saying, no, it's really God doing this. 
It is God doing this. And there's going to be some things that are going to happen in your life. And it's going, to, it's going to absolutely say, did you see that? That was God. I'm telling you, miracles are fixing to start to happen. And there's some of you, it's going to start this week. There's going to be one miracle that's going to happen this week. And there's going to be a provision of a job. There's, there's no way you could get this job. There's no way you could get this job. You don't have it. You don't have the paperwork. You don't have the schooling of it. But you will get the job. Apply for the job and watch God show up and tell you and he is in love with you that he wants you to follow him and surrender him and then that you will be able to profess this God that I serve is real and living and he loves me and he loves you as too. Because it's not about all the preacher and the prophet. It is about you that you are a living testimony of his love that he will do great and mighty things in you so that others will see his His love love and they will be saved some of the bad things that you've had happen in your life have come to this point because of this purpose that God's going to say I'm going to show my goodness now we always forget we blame God for the bad because he didn't do anything about it but we forget that there's a curse on this world and that this devil means to steal kill and destroy you that you may not sway towards God and go to heaven and follow him that others may go to heaven and follow him as well that he will get you and trick you and that you will find yourself eternally eternally in hell forever and ever. He's been doing this for 6,000 years, and he's really good at it. We think we're smart. We think we're okay about it. We think we can do these things. But in that, God is saying, look, rely on me. Trust me in these times. Fight this fight with me, because this is what's going to happen. One person, one person, listened to God, did what he was told, and now a nation of people are turned back to him. You don't believe this. You don't believe this. But I speak this. You are that one person. Many will see salvation because of your obedience to do what he's telling you to do many 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 will be saved because of your obedience of what he's telling you to do how cool will it be one day when you're in heaven and Jesus comes out and his glory shines and he calls your name and you walk up to him and you're just absolutely overwhelmed with his love. You're falling down. You're crying. And he's like, you know, wipe your tears. It's good. I am proud of you. Well done. Stand up and see your reward. And as he turns you around, all the faces that you, because of your influence and your obedience, went to heaven, you will see their faces in heaven because of your obedience. And the glory goes to God because you submitted to Him in the first place. Because why? He loved you first. It's all about His love. It changes everything. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, These are the times of Elijah's spirit coming across the earth. You have the power of life and death in your tongue, so speak life. As the one who done you wrong, forgive them that you may be forgiven. And speak life, 
salvation over them. If you had a glimpse of what hell was, you would not want anyone, your worst enemy, you would not want your worst enemy to go to that place. Today, the clash. Do you see the people that are in your life? Do you see their souls? And do you see the chance that you have to share Jesus with them? Who's going to fight for their souls? They're not in my life. They're in your life. They're crossing your path. The students that you go to school with, the people at your job, the neighbors that that come out and and, and play with their kids and and, and, uh, walk their dogs, the people you cross the hallways with and cross the street with, that you start communicating, saying, hey, how you doing, you know, and get to start to know them. I can't be there, but you are there. You are Elijah. Your words have great power to speak into their lives. Ooh, I, okay, okay. Holy Spirit says, I, I, I say, the Holy Spirit is coming upon you now. That even at a moment that you stop where you're at and pray for somebody and lay hands on them, their life will change. Healing will come. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> I see many of you laying hands on people and the sickness is leaving the people. You, God's blessing you with the healing. The power to heal, to speak, to lay hands. But it's your obedience. Will you hear God say, pray for them? Will you hear God say, lay your hands on them? God says, well, just, 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 just. Take your finger. Don't even touch them, but pray over them and watch the Holy Spirit fall on them and heal them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. That, that God is empowering you. You're Elijah. You're the one who's going to make a difference. The Spirit of God is coming upon you now. And in that, this week, you're going to have opportunities to see what God's going to do in your life. Will you take the challenge? Will you take the clash? Will you fight the fight? As we close, you bow your heads. And I pray for you today. Maybe today you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Today, you're battling with such things. You're battling sin. You're battling addiction. You're, you have this pornography addiction. You have this pill addiction. You have this cigarette addiction. You have this alcohol addiction. You have this gossiping addiction. You, you, you're attracted. This thing gives you this, like this buzz in your head. It makes you feel a certain way and you like the way that feels. But you know it's a sin against God. And God is saying today, I want to set you free from that. And then that just ask, cry out for Him and salvation to Him and He will set you free and for you believers today he's calling you up it's time to step in and be Elijah in your part of the world Father we just come to you in the precious and holy name of Jesus we again thank you for the opportunity to preach your word we stand in the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish things whereunto it is sent that your power come upon them this is no weak and, and just meaningless uh, 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 sermon word this is a word from heaven that this is power coming down through the Holy Ghost we thank you for this word we ask now that you will uh, again not just uh, uh, let it just fall on deaf ears and, deaf ears and fall to the ground and into the, the hard sand I pray that it goes deep into good so- to soil of their hearts, that you will give boldness to everyone hearing to, to know the truth that you are the God of Elijah as you are the God of them. The same power that fell on him will fall on them. And many will be saved by this move of your word and the testimonies of your word will set them free and save many souls God I bless your people in the name of Jesus 
I pray for that one who's that, that suicidal spirit that is on them. I ask now that you'll send a warring angel and remove that spirit. Uh, suicidal spirit, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave that woman right now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for a favor of, of your blessing of the two people that have the ideas of entrepreneurship, they're trying to start a job. God, I pray that they start a business, of their own business. I pray and ask that you will show them favor this week, open doors that no one could open for them. Get them that contract that will bless them their business. Showing them you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the provider. Then as many watch them and are hoping for their failure, that the testimony will come back and that might lead them to salvation. God, I bless your people with truth and freedom, but most of all your love, that a passion will fall upon their hearts to come after you with everything they have and forsake everything in this world and come after you. Bless your people today. We love you and give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. You are dismissed.